Welcome to Dear Sandy. I'm Sandy Galef, a member of the New York State Assembly, representing parts of Northern Westchester and parts of Putnam County. And today we're going to be talking about a wonderful organization, Friends of Karen. And uh, I know that probably many uh, viewers have heard about Friends of, of Karen uh, and maybe been involved through their family or through their neighbors or friends. Uh, with health issues with, with young children. And today I have as my guest the Executive Director of Friends of Karen, uh, Judith Factor. Welcome, Judith. Thank you. And, um, I, you know, Friends of Karen, it's, it's hard to, I remember when it started actually, and what was 1978? 1978. Right. And um, I thought the concept was so good, and you've just been. You know, year after year, doing wonderful things to, you. to help people and families and, and children who have major, major health needs. So how did it all, were you there in 70? Were you I was at all? not there. No? Okay. I've been the executive director of Friends of Karen's for 11 years. Mm -hmm. So I came in at pretty much on its 30th anniversary. But Friends of Karen was founded in 1978, just as you said, by a woman named Sheila Peterson. People in the mm -hmm. area may remember Sheila. And it's to me, it's the classic story of what a one person with a great idea can do. And she just started the organization as a compassionate neighbor. In fact, it wasn't an organization at all. She really was the original social media person. Her neighbors and friends had a daughter named Karen who had a terminal illness, a genetic disorder. She was in the hospital in Manhattan for a year mm -hmm. and wanted to come home to live the end of her life with her family. Their, her family had no money. They, doctors asked her to go into a nursing home and uh, Karen's parents didn't find a suitable facility for a teenager. She was 16 uh, years old right, at right. that time. So uh, mm -hmm. Sheila reached out to the community and told about Karen's plight. No social media, no internet, the good old newspaper right, and radio, right. the way mm -hmm. things were done. Mail. Yes, <laughs> <Whatever>. mail. <laughs> and uh, the community sent $36,000 in 1978 in a matter of weeks. And oh it was goodness. enough to care for Karen. She was com needed 24-hour care uh, for the 11 months that she lived. And after Karen died, people sent memorial contributions and there was money mm -hmm. left over. And someone brought another child and said, this is your next child. And so began Friends of Karen, what started with one child and one family, Friends of Karen, has mm -hmm, now mm -hmm. supported over 16,000 children in the last 41 years. So, Oh my goodness. So wow. it's a great yeah. idea. And it's, it's just, but it does show how an individual can have such a yeah. tremendous impact on one family, but an impact on, you said 16,000? 16,000. families. No, children, not children, family. Children, right, right. So there are lots of family members um, involved. Yeah. So um, that, is, that is incredible. It's uh, an inspiring story and it just, you know, I feel like even though Friends of Karen has evolved and is a very different organization than it, today than what it was in Sheila's day, medicine is different than mm -hmm. it was in Sheila's and Sheila's Day, we still reach out to the community. The community still plays a very major role in what we do. And it, you know, we, we use Sheila's guiding principles that inspire mm -hmm. us to this day. I know that there are a lot of um, different organizations that do fundraisers for Friends of Karen. And I suppose people can do it individually, but, but I know of a number of them that are raising money, um, you know, when they have an event or, or so on and contribute the funds uh, to Friends of Karen? Well, we are virtually 100% funded by uh, charitable organizations mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. individuals. Uh, we raise all of our funding every single year. Our budget this year in uh, 2019 is $4.2 million. And mm -hmm. so we are always um, 
you know, we are always looking for support and it doesn't nearly touch the need of all of our families. Mm -hmm. We and what Friends of Karen started in Westchester, but we our service area covers the five boroughs of New York City out to the eastern end of Long Island to Suffolk County. Oh my goodness, wow. Up to Sullivan County. Right. We support uh, five counties in northern New Jersey and southern mm -hmm, Connecticut, mm -hmm. Fairfield, Middlesex, and New Haven counties. So our service area is large and there is a great need. There are not a lot of organizations. In fact, there's no one that does really all that mm -hmm. we do. So it all started out just with a, uh, a Westchester um, activity. I guess Sheila was from Westchester. Yes, probably. well we're, our right. office is in, our headquarters are in North Salem mm -hmm. and it, we've remained in North Salem. Karen lived in North Salem and Sheila lived in Croton Falls. So that has been the core of our support. We have a small office in New York City. We have three full-time social workers that work out of that office and then a small office in Long Island in Port Jefferson. Wow. So, uh, so staffing is is not. It's it's not like you have a huge huge staff. No. No, it doesn't sound like it. Okay. No, we have a staff of twenty eight, full uh -huh. and part time. Uh, about half of our staff are social workers or child life specialists or expressive arts therapists. Not everybody works full time. Our social workers. This past uh, year, we support about six over 600 families every year and our social workers carry a caseload of 40 to 60 families at any given time and that's a lot that's a lot that's, that's a, lot. a lot that is a lot so you don't get any government funding this we've no? very very little we've gotten right. a few member item grants here and there but we really have right. not right well it's great that you've done what you've done now i know in front of you you have a um, an annual report. So that was uh, for last year, 2018. And what you do, I guess, is uh, in order to raise money and to let people know what you're doing, you, you have transparency Absolutely. and talk about it in your annual report. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, we are feel a very great responsibility to our supporters and great accountability to them. We can't, couldn't do it without um, all that we do. And, you know, we, we have people far and wide, individuals, foundations. About a third of our funds are raised through special events, mm -hmm. which we have mm -hmm. a lot of special events in all of our communities. About a third through foundation grants and you know, other formal means, and then about a third from just individuals, companies, charitable, you know, churches, Boy Scouts, you name it, and mm -hmm, lots mm -hmm. and lots of gifts in kind. Right. So people really do want to contribute knowing that the government's not paying for it. it Absolutely. It's really about people to people right. helping because others. Because really what Friends of Karen does is we support families of a child with a life-threatening illness. Mm -hmm, and as I mm -hmm. said, about 86% of those children have some form of cancer. And the children are referred to us by and large from the hospitals, the social workers in the hospitals, and principally for some kind of financial support. We look at what the loss of income is as a result of the child's illness. Very often a parent has to stop working. We have mm -hmm. a many single parent families and there's a loss of income to keep mm -hmm. themselves. Mm -hmm. As you know, it often takes two incomes just to keep a family afloat. So look at right. if you lose one. So we spend a little bit over $100,000 a month just paying family bills. And most of that goes to housing, utilities, food, travel back and forth to the hospital, medical bills, um, car insurance, you, you name mm -hmm, it, what, mm -hmm. it, what keeps the family afloat, the nitty gritty kinds of, of things. And we really depend on the community and lots of things for gifts in kind that we, we receive. Food insecurity is a very big problem for our families and we always need either supermarket gift cards or American Express or other mm -hmm. gift cards. So people, you know, a lot of the families are in the hospital for months on end and their lives are as abnormal as you could imagine and mm -hmm. they simply can't afford um, to to live and they have to take care of they have other children that mm -hmm. are um, you know get neglected 
for no other reason than the parent just really focuses on the ill child right. by necessity. So we really look at what the impact is on the whole family and then provide support in that way, mostly through financial support, but then our social workers work and provide guidance for each family. And we have 41 years of collective experience in guiding families through mm -hmm. these. And we don't ever tell a parent what to do. It isn't our child, but we can tell them how other families have handled these situations. You know, we save and we prepare mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. our child to go to college or summer camp, but nobody prepares for their child's right. illness. Right. And that's Absolutely. what Friends of Karen does. And then we have a, I think, a very unique program where we have a sibling support program. Mm -hmm. And we have expressive art therapists and child life specialists who work one-on-one -on -one with the brothers and sisters of the ill child, and this is particularly important sometimes when we know the ill child has, doesn't have a good prognosis. We help prepare the, prepare the family. We, you know, we really guide the siblings to gain, in a sense, personal mm -hmm. strength through this experience, and we do. The kids are just remarkable mm -hmm. and resilient, as are the ill children and the parents. I don't think people mm -hmm. realize the kind of inner strength they have until they're confronted until with they something like this. So you've really gone from when, when it was developed, Friends of Karen, with a neighbor suggesting that her neighbor needed help with her right. child, to now you have outside organizations providing you with with people that are in need? Is that how mostly it comes? The, mostly mostly through the hospitals. Uh -huh. uh, could be other families through the clinics. You know, there's a network of of families who get to know each other through the clinics, through programs like this where you promote what the mm -hmm. kinds of ser support that we provide through other organizations. You know, I, I always say Friends of Karen is the greatest organization. I hope you never need to know. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. if you have an ill child, you really, really need Friends of Karen mm -hmm. by your side. I would think that the at the Westchester Medical Center with the Children's Hospital. Yes, we might have a lot of a children. source. Oh right. yes, many from um, from the, the Maria Ferrari Children's Hospital, from Yale New Haven Children's Hospital, from Sloan Kettering, um, mm -hmm. Morgan Stanley Children's Hospital, any of the major hospitals um, as refer their, their patients to us. So right. our social workers work with the families primarily in their home. They get to know them. They, we try to provide culturally appropriate bilingual when we can support for the families mm -hmm. and you know we see the difficult circumstances and we really get to know the families lots of uh, services are provided and outpatient now and I think that's the big mm -hmm, mm -hmm. big difference from when Friends of Karen first started a child who had received a cancer diagnosis it was almost a terminal always a terminal um, prognosis and now many of the children most of the children live but they are, have long protocols. If you, we have many children mm -hmm. who have some form of leukemia, and the protocol for that is two or three years. So you can imagine what that does to your family. It turns mm -hmm. their lives mm -hmm. just upside down. Let's talk about those families. Um, if you are a family with great health insurance um, and, and, and wealth, you probably are okay or not? Do you find that we even families? No, yes, we have no means testing at all. Mm -hmm. Though many of our families, we have about 30% of our families live below the poverty level. And you can mm -hmm. imagine that's a little over $25,000. A family of four could not live in Westchester for, right. it's hard, and with right. a sick child. But we say no family should face their child's illness alone. Mm -hmm. Maybe they mm -hmm. won't need financial support, but maybe they need guidance. Maybe mm -hmm. they want their, their children, their siblings, their other children need support. So we don't have a means test at all, mm -hmm. even though the majority of our families are referred to us initially for some kind of financial support. Mm -hmm. So um, now l let's talk about some of the illnesses that, that you've encountered with the 16,000 um, children. Has it, when it first started, was, was, were there certain diseases? Was it cancer at that point? And now it's a little different or has that always been? I, I don't know the answer to that. Um, I think that Karen had a genetic illness. Mm -hmm. We say life-threatening. Mm -hmm. um, most of the children have some form of cancer, but there are organ 
disorders. We have children mm -hmm. that have heart transplant, lung transplants. Right. Um, we have kids with autoimmune illnesses. Um, many have um, blood cancers, a lot of leukemia, lymphoma, um, which is today is very, very um, treatable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, when you said so many things now are treatable, and that's how different it is. It is. That's wonderful. Because when Sheila started the organization, her um, adage was that when you provide financial and emotional support to families, to parents, they then have more time to love. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. the consideration was that the child was not going to live. Today, you don't. You know, we sadly we do have probably about of our maybe 600 families a year, maybe 70 deaths, which is way too many. But it is a a smaller uh, percentage, yes, which, it which is. is good. We've it is come a long way. We don't deal at all on the medical side. That's mm -hmm, for the mm -hmm. doctors, and we're partners in the care team. We the the hospital takes care of the medical needs we take care of the home and the community needs. Mm -hmm. It's like having a best friend available for anything. Our social workers, and every family is assigned a social worker, it becomes their person, mm -hmm. and they follow the family for as long as they need our support. And sadly, sometimes even after a child uh, dies, we they become part of our family. We mm -hmm. remember mm -hmm. them. Always our social workers send um, cards on the anniversary of the child's death and birthday, and we have an annual memorial service, and we have memorial quilts, and we do a lot of bereavement support when we, mm -hmm. when we need to. So we have a lot, of, um, a lot of goodwill in the community, and I think that when people get involved with Friends of Karen, they see that we're dealing with the nitty-gritty, the mm -hmm, kinds mm -hmm. of things that keep a family afloat when they're dealing with such a terrible situation. It's, it's hard to understand unless, uh, you know, fortunately I've had healthy children, but it is really hard, hard to really imagine all of the different problems that an individual has when they're, when they're child is diagnosed um, with a cancer, brain tumor, whatever yeah. it is, um, you know, what they have to go through. So when, when you get somebody that's going to be part of Friends of Karen, um, does the social worker go right to the hospital? Does the social worker go to the home? Well, how it depends do you, how on... How do you start that networking? Yes, it depends. What happens is a family calls us. Um, they'll, we do an intake process on the telephone, ask a mm -hmm. lot of different questions, what kind of support they need, and then if they're looking for financial support, we generally send an application and we ask them what was the loss of income. We, and we do, again, mm -hmm. for accountability to our donors, we do look at you know, what their expenses were before and now that their child is ill. And we come up with a mm -hmm. plan for that particular family based on, one, what we can afford, and mm -hmm. two, what they really need. So we provide the support that we need. Then, And it's often in the family's home if they're in the hospital 24-7 or it's at an end-of-life situation, we'll go meet them in the hospital. But they you know, we get to know who they are. Working with them in the home, we often find out things that the hospitals don't know. Mm -hmm, you know, we, mm -hmm. I can't tell you how many beds I've bought or linens or air conditioners or air purifiers because we see what the condition is in mm -hmm, the home mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. we know that a child with a compromised immune system can't go back into right. that situation. We have done everything. There is, I guarantee, <laughs> Everything. Have you learned a lot yourself? <laughs> oh my goodness, I have learned. I have learned so much. I have learned that how lucky I am to have uh -huh. had two healthy children. I've learned how hard it is um, to be a low-income individual and to be faced with what you're faced with your child. Mm -hmm. I've learned to value every single day. I've learned to appreciate. Um, how good people are. I mm -hmm. see the best in every everyone. We are an apolitical organization. I think there is no family that wants to, no individual that wants to see a family suffer. I have a colleague that mm -hmm. said, you have to have ice water in your veins not to feel 
when you come to Friends of Karen. And we do all kinds of basic things for a family that, you know, things that you would take for granted. We send birthday presents to all of the children in the family. Mm -hmm. So a parent mm -hmm. doesn't have to worry or forget. And we even send something called birthday in a bag, which is a cake mm -hmm. mix and plates and fun things. And these are things that Girl Scout troops and Boy Scout troops and synagogues and churches do and provide for us and companies. So we send maybe eight or nine hundred birthday presents every year, most of which are donated through toy drives during the holidays. And mm -hmm, we, mm -hmm. we, it's something very special. Right now we're working on our back to school program. We get the school lists of all the children in the family. And we have, right now, I, in my office, I left the volunteers packing backpacks and school supplies. Our office looks a little bit like a Staples or <laughs> with so much. With the pencils and the yes, erasers you can't and imagine the whatever is the in there. And, and imagine the relief from a parent that doesn't have to go shopping right. for that for their child. Right. You know, when there's this anticipation of the new school year, and if your mm -hmm, child's mm -hmm. sick, you just don't feel like being around everyone who's mm -hmm. so excited. But the children are thrilled, and we get wonderful, wonderful photos and letters. How many backpacks do you do? do you, we do. do you I think them? now we're, we anticipate between 750 and 800 backpacks uh -huh. this year with, with school supplies, and then we provide a $25 gift card for every child could buy something new for the beginning mm -hmm, of the school mm -hmm. year. Almost all of it is donated. Mm -hmm. uh, we also do a big holiday Adopt-A-Family program where each child gives us a wish list of $100 and we match them with a donor who shops for them and we work seven days a week um, during the holidays and we maybe send uh, gifts for about 900 children. And we work out of a little old house in North Salem which continues mm -hmm. to be our headquarters. There's not an inch to move. And we, we have just such wonderful volunteers we send. You just, this year we got a wonder, a company did a big toy a drive for, we sent every child a summer sack that had um, a towel and suntan lotion mm -hmm. and a sun hat. So when there are things that we have, we all send them. Mm -hmm. But again, our, we have always a dire need for for supermarket gift cards and other things mm -hmm. for the real basic stuff. Do you stuff. have program bricks? That bricks? Well, this for? year we something that I wanted to do when I first came uh -huh. to Friends of Karen. We are going to dedicate an engraved brick walkway at Friends of okay. Karen with okay. beautiful messages from many of the families who have had a child who has been mm -hmm, a mm -hmm. who has been a friends of Karen child or for some of our wonderful supporters and the first phase we'll we're going to dedicate our brick walkway on uh, September 14th mm -hmm. Saturday morning and we're just very excited so about how do, it so if people want to um Help with bricks, is that one way that people can contribute dollars? They or? can, they can do that. They can go onto our website and see all the various activities that we have planned. We have um, dinners and we have a 5K walk and that we do every October for a special fund, Adina's Angels Fund, which was named for one, a Friends of Karen Child that helps fund that mm -hmm. helps brothers and sisters. We have uh, dinners at um, various, you know, people want to help. Mm -hmm. They really mm -hmm. want to help. We have a big gala in New York City on October 24th. Other ways, you can like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, um, promote social media. September mm -hmm. is Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. We'll be doing a lot of, of promotion around that. You can change your Facebook picture to have a Friends of Karen frame. I mean, mm -hmm, lots mm -hmm. of lots of different ways. And most of all, if you want to, if you know somebody who needs Friends of Karen services, refer them Need to, to us. Need to reach out. So how does, um, so a volunteer can volunteer dollars. Yes. They can coordinate activities to raise dollars. Right. Um, they can volunteer at Friends of Karen. Okay, right at your headquarters. Right at our headquarters. Right. Or, they can do that. Um, they, they can. They participate. can't really. They can't directly be involved with the family. Can we they? We only have one program that we call Beth's Buddies, okay. and that is a program that's homework help or reading help that we carefully vet um, 
a volunteer, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. we do have some who have been special ed teachers or someone who can consistently give an hour to meet with a brother or a sister or even an ill child that's being homeschooled to work with them for an hour or so in their home in Westchester or in the Bronx or whatever mm -hmm, is a mm -hmm. convenient location. So that's one of the few ways um, that somebody could work directly with a child. We will have a memorial service this year on December 8th at Fordham University. We can always use volunteers to help us with our special events mm -hmm, as well. Mm -hmm, and we always mm -hmm. have families speak there. Right, right. So there are lots of <coughs> wonderful opportunities for people to be involved. And uh, I, unfortunately, there will probably be another, what, 600 families right. next year? Right. And we support year about, after. we always have a changing number. People go off treatment. Unfortunately, children die. Um, we, we generally s serve an average of about 320 families every month, mm -hmm. so there is never a time. I have somebody once asked me, do you ever have a slow season? We never have a slow season. Illness is not seasonal. People call us every single day wanting support, and I think every day that we're open, we receive a referral from one new child. So, and Friends of Karen, I'm proud to say we've never turned a family away who meets our qualifications. A child is birthed through age 21. They have mm -hmm. to live in our service area um, and have what we would consider a life-threatening right. illness. Right. Are, are most of the children at the younger end or, or they, is your cl closer to 21 or high no, school? No, most, most of the children are in the 4 to 11-year-old ra okay. range. We have a, on our annual report, or you can go on our website, we have a profile of the demographics of our families. But a large, mm -hmm. about 60% have incomes low under $50,000. Um, about 50% live in the five boroughs of New York City. And I, you know, as I, I mentioned, they have a range of illnesses. Mm -hmm. So, um, anybody who wants to get connected with you, do we have a website that we can announce or a phone number? Or yes, whatever? we have. Uh, you can go onto our website, which is friendsofkaren.org. Mm -hmm. We have a general phone number, which is nine one four two seven seven four five four seven. You can send us an email. You can. There's anyway, stop by our our office on uh, Titicus Road in North Salem. It's a big old house with a big porch, and you will always see a lot of activity right. in our area. Thank you so much, Judy. I, I you know, I, I as I said in the very beginning, I I knew a lot about friends of Karen, but I know so much more today. And uh, what your organization has been able to do over all of these years since 1979 uh, is incredible. And uh, we owe it to you and all the other people that have been involved throughout the years, helping our families and, and children uh, have a better better life uh, yeah, and the for everyone. Kindness, and the kindness of people in the community who just right. come forward. And it's really, it's very gratifying to say. Okay, so we're gonna try to get more people that are with kindness <laughs> to, you know, I thank you so much for thank being you on so the much. program. And for those that are watching, uh, if you're filled with uh, feelings about trying to really help our children, uh, don't hesitate giving a call to Friends of Karen. Thank you very much for watching. If you need to contact me, I'm at 914-941-1111. Thanks so much for watching.